Greetings everyone, it's Professor Fiore, and today we're going to do something a little out of the ordinary. We're going to take a look at a Class A power amplifier, but instead of using the textbook standard resistor that you would typically see, right, we're going to use a model for a loudspeaker. Now there is, if you haven't seen it, there is a video um, in the AC circuit playlist that explains how you can make a model of a single loudspeaker, you know, like uh, an eight inch woofer, 12 inch woofer, something like that, right? Um, this is a simplified model of that loudspeaker. So there's various parts of it. Um, RVC is the resistance of the voice coil. LVC is the inductance of the voice coil. And then these three other elements essentially they uh, reflect the mass and the compliance, the springiness, if you will, of the loudspeaker in the, uh, in the air that's trapped in the enclosure, right, in the box. So clearly this is not just a resistor. And the question is, how does this affect the response of the amplifier? What do we wind up seeing? When we plot load lines, right, we get these nice straight lines, you know, because I'll have a a 10 ohm resistor out here or something like that, you know, all depending. And we'll get a nice, you know, here's the IC value and over here is the VCE value. We get this nice straight line. We know where the Q point is. We can figure out what the swings are. All right, off we go. Well, you know, we know that reactance depends on the value of the frequency. How does that impact what we're doing over here as far as the power is concerned? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a couple of different frequencies. We're going to use a low frequency, 25 hertz, and uh, a relatively sort of mid-rangey kind of frequency at 1 kilohertz. This combination can have a zero-degree phase angle, purely resistive. It can have a capacitive phase angle. It can have an inductive phase angle. Most people, you know, if you ask who, who knows something about this kind of stuff, will say, oh, yeah, loudspeakers are inductive. Well, they're inductive over a large part of their frequency response. But there are points where it's resistive. There are places where it's capacitive. In fact, what you actually have here in, in this section right here is a parallel resonant network. And right at resonance, that's resistive, right? You can get capacitive and inductive on either side of that. At high frequencies, at middle to high frequencies, uh, single loudspeakers like this definitely are inductive. Now, you start adding things together, you get a multi-way multi loudspeaker, two-way, three-way loudspeaker, and you throw in a, a passive crossover network, you can have a really, really complex um, response out of here, what the impedance is doing. There are techniques you can use to sort of smooth that out, make it a little bit more consistent, but, you know, you can imagine the, the, the complexity in any case, right? This is just a single loudspeaker. This is something you might get off of, uh, you know, like maybe a, a 10 inch woofer, okay? You know, low, low frequency, bass frequency loudspeaker, something like that, all right? Okay, so I've hooked up this kind of hokey amplifier over here because my goal is not so much to look at the amplifier as to see what it is that the load is doing, all right? Okay, so I've thrown in an uh, an ammeter and a voltmeter because I want to get IC and VCE because the whole point on this thing is to plot the load line. And to do that, we are going to use the post processor. And if you don't know what the post processor is in TINA, go to the TINA uh, uh, playlist and you will find a video on using the post processor with TINA. Okay, so first let's just do a transient analysis here. So I'm going to be doing this 25 hertz. This is the first one. I've already set this up. 9 volts peak, 25 hertz. And this is going to give us pretty much a full swing on our uh, output right before clipping. So at 25 hertz, right, we're going to see a couple of cycles here from 80 to 160 uh, milliseconds. Boom. There we go. All right. So here's the VCE. Let's go take a look at the V load, right? So we can see this is swinging up pretty nice, you know, decent looking kind of sine wave over here. Um, here's the generator signal, okay? 
that's the current collector current you can see how this is going right down to zero so we know we're just off of clipping here you know so far so good right everything looks good but what's not maybe immediately apparent is what's happening with the um with the load line so we're going to come in hit the post processor right the add curves kind of thing over here and as i always do the first thing we're going to do is just open this up so i want to do an xy so i'm going to select that now the x part right the horizontal part is going to be vce so i'm going to grab vce copy that down here now the y part over here right that's going to be the vertical that's the collector current so copy that down Boom. and let's just call this for lack of a better name i'll just call it ll for load line because i'm kind of lazy right now create that okay boom so i see a straight line um, this indicates that we're probably pretty close to a centered cue point here simply because we're just barely running out of room up here at saturation and not quite coming down to cut off but it does what we need it to do right we can see that there is a, a nice straight line and this is sort of what we would expect you know this is this is no great surprise all right all right now comes the fun bit you know the good stuff is coming whenever i say that right so we're going to change this from 25 hertz to one kilohertz and we're going to bring the amplitude down to five volts because i don't want it to clip this is one thing that this load will wind up doing you know the impedance is going to be different at different frequencies so you will find that you can clip at some frequencies that won't clip at other frequencies right well i've already you know i've already checked this obviously so i know that five volts at the new frequency is not going to clip all right so we'll do the transient again and because i'm going at, at uh, one kilohertz we don't need quite so much in terms of cycles over here so let's just go so let's say we do how about two cycles we'll just go from 10 to 12. what okay we'll get back to that in a sec so here's our signals all right so here's my collector current my uh, v load okay i've got VCE, you know, I've got the things that I expect. But what the heck was this, right? Function X is, of course, properly VCE. And function Y is IC. The AC values. I should have a straight line here. <laughs> what's with this ellipse well you get an ellipse if you don't have zero phase angle i just happen to you know being a sneaky kind of guy when i threw in 25 hertz that's actually very close to the resonant frequency of this network right here and this thing winds up with pretty much a zero phase angle it's resistive so you end up with a straight line right when we did the first plot this one right here we wind up with straight line but now if you actually went through the tedium of, of calculating right at one kilohertz uh, the new network you would find that there is an appropriate phase angle and this is what you get in the extreme case where you have a purely capacitive or purely inductive load you get a circle right of course if it's purely inductive you know or purely capacitive for that matter there's no real power in it either so mm, that's not a, a lot of use but when you have some phase angle you know 45 degrees 60 degrees 32 degrees whatever it is you're going to get something like this right the greater the phase angle is the more open the ellipse is and of course the closer it is to purely resistive the closer this is to a straight line okay kind of cool what do you think this does as far as power dissipation on the transistor you know there is something called safe operating area and it's possible that you know at certain frequencies when this thing really opens up this curve can go outside the safe operating area of the transistor 
So you have to be on the conservative side. You know, driving a pure resistor is easy compared to driving a real live, you know, reactive load. That is definitely a bit more challenging. All right, so I hope you picked up something interesting here. You can monkey around with this, you know, other kinds of simulations. You can just copy this sort of thing. Um, like I said, you might want to look at that other video, try different models, see what happens. Sometimes it's good to experiment and just play around. All right, have a good one. I'll see you next time.